Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk uh, mountain weather and ski conditions here on the verge of this uh, this precipice of this weekend. And I want to start off with a live camera. I know I showed uh, Loveland yesterday. That was when the snow was uh, basically shrouding the Continental Divide and snowing over Loveland and uh, parts of Colorado. I've uh, got about four or five inches of snow. Loveland uh, over to Breck and Vale, Steamboat, for example. But now it's clear as a bell, and this is going to be really the story of the West the Intermountain West over the next probably four or five days. And I, I'm looking at temperatures and forecasting, you know, at 10,000 feet. This camera view is actually from 12,000 in Colorado. But in general, when you forecast temperatures at 10,000 across the board, Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, I think a lot of those temperatures at 10,000 are going to be 40 to 45 degrees each afternoon for the next four, maybe even five days. So we're going to have some some very warm conditions at the base areas of these ski resorts as well, well above freezing. Um, so some probably some wet avalanche activity on the rise across the west. And, and I'm going to take you all the way on the next week and show you what lies ahead. But that's what we're facing right now. Big, giant dome of high pressure, dry weather, severe clear and warm temperatures across the Intermountain West. So that's the current state of affairs on radar and satellite. You know, all the activity is out here. We're going to see a parade of storms march into the Pacific Northwest, but they're running into this giant dome of high pressure. And the Pacific, or the Pacific, the polar jet stream, which is basically has the lock and the key to all the cold air, is taking these storm systems and just escorting them straight up in to British Columbia. So the cold air is locked away for now. Um, I think on the tail end of this storm, it's probably going to brush uh, all the way down to Tahoe. So if I was looking at Saturday and trying to figure out where the new snow is going to be, I would think that it's from Tahoe north into Shasta, into Oregon, into Washington, and into British Columbia between now and Saturday morning. That is going to be the pattern. So you can see it in the jet stream. Look at that powerful jet guiding all of that energy with that low into the west coast. and it just washes out. It runs into that big high and it just disintegrates that entire storm. The energy gets shoveled up into Canada. Any moisture on the southern end of it dries up after its, after its time in California. So then we have to look ahead. Now that storm will help to kind of break down this giant dome for the next storm. And here it is. By the time we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on the clock here, notice We've got a more broad area of low pressure swinging into the West Coast. And there's energy behind it as well. You can almost see the dip in the jet kind of running behind it right there as well. So this would be a more active pattern by the time we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, even Friday of next week. So at least there's something to look forward to after such a warm, dry, severe, clear stretch here. Our future radar, again, between now and Saturday, again, all the moistures between British Columbia, Whistler, Washington, Oregon, and Tahoe in California. Watch the storm just kind of wash out as it goes into Sunday morning. And then there's another storm which comes in behind that into the Pacific Northwest again. But it, like its predecessor, runs into this big dome of high pressure and it dries up. And the moisture remains up in the Pacific Northwest into Monday. Now that starts to change. Watch what happens right here. On Tuesday, because of that, it's benefiting from what happened with that other low and helping to kind of break down the high. These uh, other storm systems will have a better shot. So there's your low. Notice it's trying to throw moisture into the Wasatch and into the Tetons and in Idaho. So that's a good sign. And into Wednesday, we're still seeing some of that flow pushing moisture now and even in the central and northern mountains of Colorado with the low hanging back into California. So that's a positive sign. We're starting to see things translate into the west. What about snow? So between today and Saturday, most of the accumulation is uh, between Tahoe, Shasta, Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia. Between Saturday and Sunday, you've added a little bit more up in the Pacific Northwest, and there isn't a whole lot else. Now between, and there might be a little bit in Jackson Hole, I mean that's just what's basically left over of that low. It's tiny, it's small, and it just flashes through. Um, now into Monday, we are starting to add some more into the Pacific Northwest. We've added a couple of inches up in Revelstoke and Fernie and Sunshine Village. And between Monday and Tuesday, things start to get a little more active. Look at Jackson's number come up, Big Sky, Bridger Bowl, 
um, and then between Tuesday and Wednesday, I really think then we'll start to see a little more activity slide and you can see the numbers ticking up and look at the Wasatch by by Wednesday morning we've added you know six seven eight inches there the numbers over Squaw and Shasta have all come up a little bit so at least there's a light at the end of this tunnel but it is going to be a um, it's going to be a warm dry four days ahead very warm in fact abnormally warm in the Intermountain West all right thank you for tuning in here always appreciate it have a great weekend